Hey everybody, what's happening? Son of a Silver Stacker here. In today's numismatic news and information for the 8th day of January 2023, I'd like to welcome you over to JM Bullion so we can look at those spot prices where they ended on Friday. But before that, gonna give a huge shout out and a big thank you to all of our channel members. This will be a lot more challenging without you really telling you the truth there. Now it looks like gold ended the week at 1874.52. Let's see, palladium ended the week at 1847.49. Silver ended the week at 2408. And platinum ended the week at 1106.84. Now let's look at the premium for the American Silver Eagle. And I don't mean to scream in your ear there. Uh, let's go here. Pre-sale. Bingo. Bing, ding, ding, ding. All right. Clicking it here. We got 40.59 minus the 2408. Uh, 4059, 248. We're looking at a premium right now of 1651 for the American Silver Eagle. And it looks like, well, its trajectory is going south, down and to the right, down and to the right. Yeah, not up and to the right. So, next thing I want to show you here is the bullion sales. US, whoops, US Mint about production sales figure bullion sales. Okay. Updated every weekday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. And I got American Eagle sales total by month. Year 2022, but I want 2023. However, there is no such date on there for the year, rather. Um, but we're going to be keeping an eye out. And they really didn't do anything. Um, uh, no new, obviously, additions for December. So let's go here to the next thing. This is um, from FunTopics.com. This is images, slides, uh, Fun 2023 JPEG. And the fun show happened to start on Thursday. Uh, went there Thursday, went there Friday. Uh, Thursday wasn't really too much set up. Um, everybody didn't have everything all ready to go all at once. Um, but by Friday, everything was hitting on all cylinders. Um, and I tell you, I went there on Thursday, and it was like a sensory overload. All right. Now, I, I have been to conventions before. I've been to the E3 convention about five or six times, and that's the, elect, uh, well, video game conventions, right, in Los Angeles or um, Las Vegas. But here's the thing. This is basically, to me, the E3 of coin conventions. And um, that very first day, cause so, um, like I said, it was sensory overload, and I was kind of discombobulated. So the very next day, I got my stuff together, and I was like, okay, I know what I want to do because I was very much all over the map. Like I said, you go to these things, you have to know what you want the very first day when you get there. You got to have a strategy. And I didn't have a strategy. I was just like, it was like walking around New York City for the very first time with my mouth open, looking up at the sky going, wow. You know, so that happened. Um, but like I said, the very next day, I got my stuff together and I made a sign saying, you know, looking for uh, uncirculated mint sets. All right. And I looked through every aisle and uh, the people that saw the sign, they flagged me down. Uh, they had proof sets. They had silver proof sets, but there was no uncirculated sets. And the people that did get a hold of me who um, mentioned, hey, you know what? I do have um, some uncirculated sets, but a guy just bought both boxes of them. And that happened four or five different times at this particular show. So somebody was going around on Thursday buying up all of the uh, uncirculated mint sets. I could not find any of them. And other people that well, that I talked to, didn't even bring them to the show. Um, I imagine they may or may not think that they were, well, going to be sold. But I'll tell you, it was remarkable. What a great show. Uh, I got to talk to the assistant mint director. Got to talk to Thomas uh, Uram. Uh, wow, right? I mean, come on. <laughs> it was incredible, folks. I had such a good time. Um, I met up with uh, Rising Heritage, uh, Lucky Duck, and Kevin over at Coins Making Sense. And it was a great show. Really good show. Uh, and I hope that... Um, you know, if, if you weren't able to go this year, uh, or at least to this particular one um, in January, maybe you go to the one in, um, what is it, in, in, in uh, what is it, the fun show in the summer. Yeah. Now, let's go over here to the next stop. Went over to the NGC booth, all right, and um, there wasn't really too much about NGCX, but I wanted to show you um, these particular ones here. There's a lot more listings here. Um, in fact, the, the highest price one lists the Michael Galdioso uh, signature for $229. But like I said, there wasn't too much talk at the NGC booth about NGCX. So uh, fortunately, uh, with the registry set that I have on NGC's uh, website, I got the invite to the cocktail hour afterwards, started, I think, to 5.30 to 7.30, something like that. And we were able to ask questions um, to the NGC personnel there. And um, well, the first question basically was, well, look, we had to find out why 1982. And he's like, well, at first we just threw a dart at the calendar. Ha uh, ha, everybody got a laugh. It was really funny. Well, 
The reason being was the commemoratives. So if you remember from one of our live streams, I think it was last Tuesday, Kevin over at Coins Making Sense said that, well, it's probably due to the fact that commemoratives came out in 1982. You remember the 150th anniversary of George Washington? Well, there's the maroon colored one and the uncirculated one in the blue, right? So that's what they were talking about with the modern commemoratives. So I thought that was pretty cool that they were able to tie that in. And let's face it, um, we did ask him other questions. Um, right now, NGCX is only focusing on, right here, American Silver Eagles. So you're only going to see those right now. Um, so I thought that was interesting. Uh, they had some really good coconut chicken, by the way. Thank you for that. Now, let's head over to the next stop. The United States Mint did not have the Bessie Coleman quarters available on Thursday. However, they did bring out their change machine, the one you'd see in a video game arcade, that dispensed quarters. Um, you either had to have a Native American dollar coin or dollar coin of some sort, and or a dollar bill. It took fives, tens, ones, and twenties. And the thing is, they were um, mixing between Anime Wong, Nito Terra Warren, um, and I think Bessie Coleman uh, quarters, because they didn't have a whole lot of Bessie Coleman quarters, but they were giving them out. Now, as um, you can see, these are being listed on eBay right now. Um, these were released January 3rd by the Federal Reserve Bank and they, like I said, you know, they're making it out, especially the Denvers and they look proof like, like that. I mean, they are stunning coins, no doubt about it, no doubt about it. And, um, just gorgeous, good stuff. That's the Bessie Coleman. Now let's head over here to the United States Mint. Whew. Okay. Um, yeah, so I did get to talk to the United States Mint assistant, uh, mint director there and, uh, well... I asked about the silver planchets and how come the mint doesn't do this, that, or the other? Well, let's talk about this first, all right? I asked the mint director, assistant mint director, I'm saying, well, why don't you sell bullion on your website? And the short and long of it is, well, if they sold bullion directly to the public, they would also have to have a mechanism, okay, to buy it back. And if you think about it, that would include how many more people onto their mint's payroll. So that may or may not work out to them. That's why they have to have all these middlemen involved because they do not buy it back. And that's probably why bullion dealers do buy it back, right? So that's probably their function and it serves multifunctions. Who knew? But I also asked about why doesn't the mint buy a mine? And I also asked, hey, does the mint buy from the LM, LME, LMBA, um, London Bullion Market? No, they don't buy bullion directly from the dealer, the, the, um, the source. <laughs> What? I thought to myself, I'm like, where do you get your silver from? Yeah, well, and they're trying to get more sources, but they did say that this upcoming year for silver planchets was going to be challenging, folks. So I just wanted to share that one with you. So I, um, that's really huge news, actually. Um, and we will be talking more about this um, going uh, forward for um, in the live streams. But let me tell you this, okay? Um, because she said that to me, I thought, gosh, you know, what in the wide world of sports is going to happen? Because let's face it, you know, there's a lot of products that come out during the year. All right. We got the Silver Proof sets. We got the American Silver Eagle from West Point. We got the American Silver Eagle uh, uncirculated from West Point. We have the American Silver Eagle San Francisco Proof. All right. Well, all these silver coins are coming out. Look at this American Liberty Silver one ounce metal, all right? What happens if the United States Mint depletes most, if not all, of its inventory, all right, for um, silver planchets? And here we go. At the end of the year, we're already in fall. Now, I've already passed the um, the peace dollar and the Morgan dollar for the uncirculated. So those, you know, if there's no real um, huge planchet shortage by the summer, those should be fine and be minted properly and struck on time and all that good stuff with adequate numbers to satisfy needs. Well, what about when we get to the fall or even winter? All right. We'll look at these things here at the very bottom of the list. Bam, right there. That's the Morgan and Peace Dollar 2023 two coin reverse proof set. And I do believe if I don't have any money this year for all of them, I think this would be the one I would focus on because there's never been that finish on the Morgan or Peace Dollar. And I think that's how important that is. And as um, well, I've reported in previous videos this year has already been set up by the United States Mint to be a very lean year. Now, obviously, um, you know the American Innovation $1 coin reverse proof sets. Well, look at this, a household order limit of five. And that really maybe isn't too surprising considering that it is a 50,000 uh, household order limit, uh, product limit, okay? But what's more interesting, if we go to the proof set, right, that has no real limits, 
All right, but look at that. There's a household product, household order limit of five that's being implemented for the first time in 2023. That should give us pause. That should make us reflect on what's important at the Mint for the upcoming year. And, you know, one of the things I wanted to share before I go to the plus ones here today, um, and I want to go to the fun show picture again, is that really, you know, there's not... Yeah, it was a very eye-opening experience, okay? I went through every single aisle. A lot of aisles had currency. A lot of people focused on currency. Uh, on the left-hand side was more like international stuff and world coins. And then in the middle, you know, you're making that transitions. You're getting the Morgan and Peace dollars. And on the right-hand side, you know, you're getting mostly um, uh, American money, uh, coin and currency. I'll tell you, um, not many people focus on modern United States Mint products. Um, mostly saw Morgan and Peace dollars, um, saw rolls of, uh, what is it, the the uh, Franklin Halfs, uh, Walkers, you know, things of that nature, but not really too many American Women Quarter proof sets, maybe one or two dealers out of all of them. I couldn't believe my eyes. And I'm thinking to myself, self, you know, it would be really, it would behoove you to get into these. That way you could be the only dog besides the mint doing this right? And yeah, you know, you're not going to make a whole lot of money, but you're going to be the authority on that subject. And when they come talking to you, well, you're going to be, like I said, the authority. Who, who, who needs answers? Oh, yeah, here you go. So let's go to those plus ones today. Folks, I'm telling you, if you do something that nobody else is doing, doesn't that kind of make you the, the go-to person? And especially if you're doing it for 10 years straight. Wow, that'd be something. Now, here we go. Now, why are waterbeds so bouncy? Well, they're filled with spring water. That's why. No, they're not. It's tap water. That's all right. <laughs> All right, this is Psalm 10, 17 through 18. It says, O Lord, you hear the desire of the afflicted. You will strengthen their heart. You will incline your ear to do justice to the fatherless and the oppressed, so that man who is of the earth may strike terror no more. Isn't that awesome? That's amazing. Now, let's head over here to 39's Fine, KOI and Coin News Radio 99.9. .9. This is One Day with Lyrics on Screen by Mattis Yahoo. And it's only got 22 likes. See if you can give him some love for this beautiful, beautiful song. Hmm. There it is, folks. So I want to thank you all for dropping by. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button. And if you do like what you're in, see, please subscribe to the channel. It's free. Son of a Silver Stacker. Out. Oh.